One final way that's new and is promising is called the RNA vaccine. With RNA and DNA, instead of putting that shape in, you put instructions in the code to make that shape. When somebody says the word vaccination, the public understanding is that you are being treated with an attenuated or a live virus or a fragment of an attenuated or live virus. A vaccine based on mRNA does not include any virus, but instead a sequence of nucleoside modified mRNA encoding viral antigens. And that the treatment is meant to keep you from getting an infection and it is meant to keep you from transmitting the infection. That's what a vaccine in the common definition of vaccine is meant to do. After we have been exposed to an infection, our immune system remembers the threat, in particular by producing antibodies. These are proteins that circulate in the blood and throughout the body. They quickly recognize and disable the invader upon contact, thereby preventing or minimizing illness. This is why we usually do not get sick with the same bug twice. We are immune. Vaccines mimic this process, encouraging the immune system to make antibodies without us having to go through the illness. Some of the leading SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidates are mRNA vaccines, based on incorporating the genetic blueprint for the key spike protein on the virus surface into a formula that when injected into humans, instructs our own cells to make the spike protein. In turn, the body then makes antibodies against the spike protein and they protect us against viral infection. Instead of putting that shape in, you put instructions in the code to make that shape. This is not a vaccine, this is a gene therapy. It's a chemotherapy agent that is a gene therapy. It is not a vaccine. What this is doing is it's actually sending a strand of synthetic RNA into the human being and is invoking within the human being the creation of the S1 spike protein, which is a pathogen it's a toxin. It's making your body produce the thing that makes you sick. This technology helps the body itself produce the viral antigen against which the body mounts an immune response. Well, in that sense, it does sound like a vaccine. No, not at all. Because a vaccine is supposed to trigger immunity. It's not supposed to trigger you making a toxin. Oh, right. That's how this differs. It's not somewhat different. It's not the same at all. This is a public manipulation of a misrepresentation of a clinical treatment. It's not a vaccination. It's not a prohibiting infection. It's not a prohibiting transmission device. In Moderna's own SEC filings, they make it abundantly clear that their technology is a gene therapy technology. In their clinical trial, they've made it abundantly clear that they could not measure the presence or absence of the virus, and they could not measure the presence or the absence of the transmission of the virus. So every single thing that they represented to be doing that preys on the public understanding of what vaccination is, they explicitly said they're not doing that. If teachers, if staffs of schools are able to say get vaccinated in February or March or April, but kids are not because there's not an available vaccine for them, do you believe it will be safe for schools to reopen physically with unvaccinated kids but vaccinated staff? I think we need to be careful as we get vaccinated not to overinterpret the results. Our results show that this vaccine can prevent you from being sick, it can prevent you from being severely sick. They do not show that they prevent you from potentially carrying this virus transiently and infecting others. When we start the deployment of this vaccine, we will not have sufficient concrete data to prove that this vaccine reduces transmission. Do I believe it reduces transmission? Absolutely yes. And I say this because of the science. But absent proof, I think it's important that we don't change behaviors solely on the basis of vaccination. It's actually a means by which your body is conscripted to make the toxin that then allegedly your body somehow gets used to dealing with. But unlike a vaccine, which is to trigger the immune response, 
This is actually to trigger the creation of the toxin. Yes, the way I've heard the companies put it is, this is to teach your body to fight this virus when it comes around. So that's how they're presenting it, right? Well, but their clinical trial didn't include any of that as even a possibility within the clinical trial. The clinical trial did not measure the presence or absence of a virus or a virus fragment. The clinical trial did not measure the possibility of transmission suppression. The clinical trial didn't measure any of those things. So this is a case of misrepresentation of a technology and it's done exclusively so that they can get themselves under the umbrella of public health laws that exploit vaccination. It's a gene therapy technology. That's Moderna's own definition. So let's stick with what they say they are. This is a gene therapy technology. We are being told to take a treatment. This is not a prophylactic, it is not helping us. We are being told to tr take a treatment for a disease we don't have and most likely will not have. And we're being told that using the careful marketing manipulation and propaganda calling these things vaccines for public health. Moderna COVID-19 vaccine is investigational and not approved by FDA. We've been talking mostly about the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine that are the gene therapy. Is there another one in the works or getting to the market that is not using gene therapy? Well, so the AstraZeneca Oxford trial is using a viral fragment. So it is more along the technological lines of what you and I might consider historically to be a vaccine. And the AstraZeneca Oxford trial has in fact been kind of an interesting one to watch because they have a methodology problem that is actually quite challenging. That in certain instances, the AstraZeneca Oxford trial has actually not used just a saline control group. They've actually used another vaccine as the control. In other words, they've stacked the deck. They're making it look like they are somehow neutral compared to another vaccination in several of their data collection efforts. And as a result of that, we have both a methodology problem, which by the way, has been criticized by a number of clinical scientists and the bigger problem is that they're still not measuring viral susceptibility and viral transmission. Those are the two legs of the stool that is required for anyone to actually say that they are vaccinating a population for public health reasons. Everybody needs to take chemotherapy for the cancer they might get, okay? Yeah. That's exactly what is happening. We are being told to take a treatment. This is not a prophylactic, it is not helping us. We are being told to take a treatment for a disease we don't have and most likely will not have. And we're being told that using the careful marketing manipulation and propaganda, calling these things vaccines for public health. mRNA is a gene therapy, it's not a vaccination. It's a gene therapy that was originally developed for cancer treatment. That's why I'm using the chemotherapy analogy. This is not a vaccination. 